We lead the world in obesity, in cancer, in IQ dropping, uh, in all sorts of neurological disorders, and the globalists are doing it on purpose, on record. The federal government mandated iodine in the salt in the 20s, and IQs went up more than 10 points in the next decade. That's federal studies. You can go to InfoWarsLife.com and check out the Survival Shield and see videos there where we show the news articles, the documents, the studies. Then in the 50s, they said, you know what, take it out. Now, I'm against forced medication, but that was government doing forced medicating through the salt because there was all sorts of thyroid problems and IQ dropping and, the, and, and, and deformities in children from not having enough iodine in utero. This is all well-known science. What do they then add into the baking powder and all the rest of it? The bromine, the bromide, which goes into the thyroid. I mean, it, it's just, it is a conspiracy, folks. Scientific American, dirt poor... Have fruits and vegetables become less nutritious? And then they go into the article saying, yes, it's been depleted. Because usually you had hundreds of different trace elements and things and the 90 essentials in the soil. Now they, with the, with the different fertilizers, put three different things in there that only the plants need. And then you eat that, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to go through all your points about the glyphosates, the fluoride, what we can do, probiotics, marketing right. employer, mir miracle cure, ADHD linked to pesticide exposure. They now admit fluoride in Time Magazine, lowering IQ ADHD last month. What is happening? Looks like it's all coming out. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Well, let's start off with this uh, whole idea of epigenetics. You know, you and I have talked about this a lot. We have this this idea in, in science and in medicine that everything comes from the genes. Scientists call it the central dogma. You know, the word dogma means something that you believe without evidence. Religious, religions usually have a dogma, but science has dogmas too. And one of the major dogmas in science is something called the central dogma, which says that everything comes from genetics. This is in the interest of the pharmaceutical companies because then they can come out with drugs that manipulate the genetics. And indeed, if you read the pharmaceutical trade journals, you'll see that this is the great push in terms of medicine is finding, uh, finding drugs that can actually affect uh, ch work with changing the genes or targeting the genes to, uh, to, to target specific disease states. However, as it turns out, the central dogma is wrong because there are nutritional factors and lifestyle factors that turn genes on and off. You and I talked about this a couple of months back when we talked about prophylactic mastectomies. Angela, uh, Angelina Jolie, for example, had her breast removed because she had a gene that uh, indicated that she may end up with breast cancer, completely ignoring the fact that that gene that causes uh, breast cancer to either come on, or to, to either occur or not occur, is turned is itself turned on by nutritional factors and lifestyle factors. This whole phenomena is known as epigenetics, epi meaning transcendent to or above. So the key to taking care of yourself, and this is so important because what it means is the, epi, the idea of epigenetics, what it means is we can take care of ourselves. We don't have to worry about our heredity when it comes to whether you're going to get diabetes or autoimmune disease or, God forbid, cancer, because epigenetics trumps genetics. And that means that we have a locus of control. We can control our epigenetics to an extent where we can't control our genes directly. We can control our genes in a secondary fashion by working with nutrients. Among the most powerful nutritional factors are, are, achieve their power via epigenetics, via turning genes on and off. For example, one of my all-time favorite nutrients is selenium. And uh, selenium, as you and I have talked about in the past, is amazingly anti-cancer. Selenium is amazingly anti-mercury, by the way, and anti-radiation as well. And selenium is, has particular protection against breast cancer and estrogenic diseases as well. So if you're concerned about, uh, about Roundup and uh, uh, glyphosates and, and pesticides and gender bending and estrogenic chemicals in the water and in the air, it becomes imperative that you use these nutrients that manipulate the body epigenetically, like selenium. The second thing I want to talk about is probiotics. There's some literature out that's indicating there that's, that, that's uh, alluding to the fact that probiotics might be a scam. And indeed, the way probiotics are being marketed by Jamie Lee Curtis and by Dan and Yogurt and by uh, uh, corporate marketers and the uh, uh, corporatocracy, they might be a scam. But a good probiotic supplement is not optional. It is a fundamental part of life. And even though probiotics are not considered to be essential nutrients in terms of the 90 essential nutrients, they're 
unbelievable importance for good health it, it cannot be under uh, cannot be overestimated for example probiotics are one of the key nutritional factors that are involved in detoxifying the body of estrogen and estrogen uh, estrogen uh, breakdown products that are associated with cancer in fact anybody who who is even remotely concerned about breast cancer or reproductive cancers or prostate cancer or testicular cancer or if it's a woman is concerned about fibroids or cysts or if women can't conceive all of these are linked to problems with estrogen metabolites using a probiotic is one of the great and underappreciated nutritional strategies for protecting yourself from estrogen but when you're using a probiotic supplement you got to be careful you can't use Jamie Lee Curtis and and, and Danny yogurt nutritional uh, nutritional strategies and nutritional products. You've got to use a broad spectrum probiotic, one that has multiple strains of bacteria, 12, uh, 14, 15 different strains of bacteria, and one that has lots of diff- uh, billions of units of bacteria in the order of 10 or 15 or 20 billion units of bacteria. In addition to eating fermented food, things like kefir and miso. Uh, tempeh, kimchi, anything fermented is going to provide you with probiotics. In addition to probiotics helping you process toxin es- toxic estrogen, probiotics help you process cholesterol. They help you process blood fats. Probiotics make vitamins, like the B vitamins, for example, are produced by good bacteria. These probiotics, by the way, are supposed to be uh, implanted in our gut as we pass through the birth canal, but we know today 30% of babies are born cesarean. If you're born cesarean or your baby was born cesarean, it becomes extra important that they focus on getting a good, you focus on getting a good probiotic supplement as well as eating fermented foods. If a baby was not breastfed long enough, this can have a negative impact on probiotics. Also, if you ha- if your baby wasn't breastfed long enough, your baby wasn't breastfed at all, you may notice that your baby is colicky. Colicky comes from the word colon. This is why babies get colicky is because they have colon issues. Colon issues are almost always associated with problems with probiotics. So if you have a baby that has eczema, if you have a baby that has pimples or breakouts, if you have a baby that's colicky or has constipation, all of these are very common. I want to talk also about SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You know, we talked earlier about how estrogens are anxiety-promoting stress management hormones. Well, guess what? A lot of folks don't realize serotonin is the same way. We have been flooded with misinformation about serotonin being a happy hormone and being a hormone that helps improve your mood, et cetera. Everybody wants to make sure that their serotonin levels are high. Serotonin is, like estrogen, a stress management hormone. It is a vigilance hormone. It's an alertness hormone. And yes, it's important. It's clearly important. But what it's important for is helping the body handle the ups and downs, the vicissitudes, the survival threats that are part of being alive. And you need to have a certain amount of serotonin. However, you do not want to poison your serotonin metabolizing system to the point where you have too much serotonin. When you have elevations in serotonin, that's what the serotonin reuptake inhibitors do. They keep serotonin levels super high, artificially high. You end up with this pro-vigilant state, with this almost paranoia state. And what happens when people take the Prozacs and the Zoloft and the serotonin reuptake inhibitors, what can happen is that they can become paranoid. And that's why you have almost everybody, almost, uh, almost all the people who are doing these school shootings and the psychiatrists, the Navy psychiatrist who was doing this, who shot up the Navy base and people doing these crazy mass murder kinds of things. Almost invariably, they're on a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, Alex. It's like a direct link between, uh, between mass murder, mass murders and uh, 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 and serotonin. Oh, reuptake yeah. When inhibitors. we heard in Austin that a guy like a zombie had just shot a cop for no reason in Walmart, I, said, I said he's going to be on those drugs. And you know what? Right. He was. Yes. It's almost always, Alex. You can almost assume that when there's some ridiculous mass murder, school shooting, crazy out of control behavior, that uh, resting behind it is some kind of serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And what it underscores is the craziness, the utter stupidity the illogical nature of using pharmacological therapy to deal with psychological issues, to deal with uh, physiological issues that are associated with poisons and toxins and lack of nutrition. We've got this pharmacomedical model that does not serve us. We've got this pharmacomedical model that enriches drug companies, that enriches the proponents of the medical model. It enriches the insurance companies. And, And speaking of the insurance companies and the drug companies being enriched, what do you think Obamacare is about. 
People, do you think Obamacare is in any way, shape, or form about taking care of your health, with the exception of perhaps major medical and traumatic, uh, traumatic, uh, uh, sur uh, heroic medicine helping heal from? It's traumatic openly about turning disasters. it all to drugs rather than medicine or real diagnosis, openly. Openly. and it's about death panels, and it's about doubling and tripling prices for insurance companies. It is big pharma taking over. That's right. And it's a redistribution of monies. It's a redistribution of wealth in the, a classic, uh, a classic example of taking money from the people and concentrating it into this uh, into this corporatocracy, this oligarchy that's made up of elites. And we as human beings and we as people and we as citizens have to do something to begin to participate in our own health care. We cannot depend on the government to do it for us. We cannot depend on government mandated or government funded or government authorized insurance companies and a government authorized medical model to do it. And this is where nutritional supplementation comes in. This is where lifestyle choices come in. This is where not participating in eating in the corporate, cor eating the corporate swill comes in, especially when it comes to developing minds and developing, baby, uh, developing bodies like our, our children. If, if it's important for us as adults to drive past, not drive through, it's extra important. And while it's easy to be glib about not going to McDonald's and not eating the fast food and not eating the drinking the soda pop, etc., it's difficult to use willpower to do it because these people who create these kinds of foods, they're smart. They're really smart. They got PhDs in understanding how to manipulate the human brain to get it to do what it needs to, to get it to do what they want it to do. So what you have to do is you have to protect yourself against these kinds of foods and against these kinds of messages. And the key, the ultimate strategy to protecting yourself from these kinds of messages and these kinds of foods, to, to weaning yourself away from the corporate swill without using willpower, which is difficult to do, is to get yourself on a nutritional supplement program. I know I've been saying this for years. I will continue to say it. 